was proposed by a very famous communication scholar. He was a earlier first he was a journalist. Uh, I I do not remember uh, what newspapers he worked with, but yeah, he started his career uh, as a journalist and then he uh, obtained a PhD, a doctorate uh, degree in, in 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 the field of communications, and he was. Yeah, uh, he uh, he joined the field of academia, and he is one of the uh, most recognized scholars in the field of communication. George Gardner, this is his model. Uh, and uh, uh, you all are MassCom senior students. Uh, when you will also study course related to communication theories, he is uh, George Gardner is also famous for uh, proposing theory related to cultivation. Uh, uh, it's, it's called cultivation theory. Some, some Call it cultivation analysis, where he talks about the promotion of violence by content on television. Uh, so Gardner is really known for that. All right. Well, this is a brief intro of presenter George Gardner, who presented the model. Uh, he was an American mass media researcher. Like I said, he started his career from the field of journalism. He was a journalist. Later, he uh, uh, obtained a doctorate degree, and then. Uh, at the peak of his career, he became the dean of the Annenberg School for Communication at the University of Pennsylvania. Let me tell you that this school is one of the most respected schools for the field of communication in the world. And George Gardner uh, uh, was uh, its dean for, uh, for many years, uh, almost two and a half decades, if I'm not mistaken. Well, this model that we're going to discuss next was actually presented in 1956. Uh, again, a time when television was popular in, in, in the United States. Alright, these are some features of Gardner's model. I'm not going over them. Right now, I'll come back to this slide after I have actually discussed the model. Um, when I was preparing my lecture, I, 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 I first I thought, okay, I'll talk about features of Gardner's model, model. But when I was going over the slides this morning, one, uh, one last time, uh, to prepare the lecture, I thought of yeah, features. I mean, let's first talk about the models and then uh, I'll talk about features. But this is important for us to know. Let's just pay attention to the last bullet here. The, this model, Gerber's model, has both verbal and graphical version, graphical presentation. If you remember Laswell's model, that was also mostly verbal, like. Just recall that model. Who says what in which channel to whom with what effect? That sounds completely verbal. Although you can give it a graphical uh, presentation as well, but this model, Gardner's model, has two uh, distinct forms. One is verbal, the other one is graphical. Let's begin from the verbal version of uh, Gardner's model. Well, you see, it has ten components, and just like uh, uh, Laswell's model. It begins from maybe an event, like the process of communication according to Gardner. Gardner begins from a person or maybe an event and then that person perceives the event and then he reacts to the event within a given situation through some means by which he means the media to make available materials in some form, like in some shape, whatever shape and context, when this person uh, reproduces the process of communication, he, he does that within a given context, then they, he conveys the content, content with some consequences. Uh, you can see by looking at the components of Gardner's model that it does have, although it does have the element of effects, but it pays attention to the meaning of uh, meaning within the process of communication. We'll talk more about it in a minute. Um, here is this caveat. Uh, a caveat is actually a kind of note, uh, like a caution, a precautionary measure. Uh, the caveat is that not all elements and stages appear in the graphic model. So this is the verbal version of, of Gardner's model, but when I show you the uh, graphical model and I'll show you that shortly. Not all of these elements appear in that. Also the graphic model starts with an act of perception. Let's see the graphical model now. Before I show you the graphical model of 
George Wagner. These are just remember that in the model, the word E, it represents an event that needs to be reported. So the, the model essentially begins from an event and then there is a person that reports the event and that is how the model uh, goes. The term, sorry, the letter E represents an event. Letter M is a, the perceiver. Person who see, it can be a person and or it can be a machine. You need to note this that letter M actually denotes perceiver. M can be a person or it can be a machine as well. If you feel like it's confusing, do not worry. I'll explain it to you one more time when I actually show you the graphical model. Just remember that E denotes the event that needs to be reported. M denotes the perceiver. It can be the person or it can be a machine. E1 is the perception of the event by this person. Does it make sense? Now, this is an event which has happened, for example, and I, I am the perceiver. I have seen the event happening. And when I am reporting the event, that is E1. Because my reporting depends on my perception, how I have, how I have perceived that, that event. So, this, this E1 may be different from E. Can it be different? Yes, because I am the mediator between the event and the reporting. Alright, E to repeat. E denotes event that has happened. M denotes the perceiver. It can be a person or it can be a machine. E1 denotes uh, the perception of events, like how, the, how M has perceived the event. event. Here the relation between, between E and then E1 is that of perception. Uh, okay, now there is one more thing I think I should tell you right after that. It's that, that in Gerbner's model, he actually emphasizes on production and perception. Okay, there is this event that has happened and it just, and the, the person or the machine that is reporting the event, of course, that they are producing the message. So production part is there. But that production depends on the perception of reporter. So the two main elements in Gerbner's model are production and perception. And we can say that Gerbner's model is actually a, a sort of chain between production, perception, 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 production, perception. So uh, it, 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 it goes in, uh, in that flow. It goes in that, with that continuity. Let's see the first slide. And whenever you want that any slide was confusing for you, I can go back to that slide anytime. Just for now, let's see the, the graphical presentation of the model and I can definitely go back to any slide if you want me to at any time. Alright, this is graphical model and the source of this image is again the book that I am using for preparing my lecture and I, uh, uh, I'll send you, uh, when I send you the PDF notes, uh, from the book chapter that, that will have the same image. Alright, now this is event that has happened. Let's say this is the event of a fire incident. There was a fire incident in a building, right? This is the event and M is the person who is reporting. It can be a person, it can be a machine. Let's say M can be a reporter and if it is machine, the camera a reporter is using camera to capture this event in that way M can be the camera. Alright? M to repeat. M can be a person or it can be a machine as well. A transmitter, a radio transmitter that can be M. And what is E1 here? E1 is the perception of the event. How this person has perceived the event. Now, I would like you to pay attention to two terminologies. Field of experience. Has anyone heard about this term field of experience? And the next is frame of reference. Both are same things. What is field of experience? If someone tells me something that I have never heard about, that thing will make little sense for me. Little me. Like maybe I, I, I won't understand. Uh, or maybe let's okay, let me explain it with the example. If someone gives me a message in Russian language, let's say. The message will make no sense for me because I do not know Russian language, right? That is field of experience. 
my my field of experience does not have any sort of experience related to russian language so the message is totally meaningless for me that is sometimes also referred as frame of reference whenever so someone tells me something i always go back to my frame of reference okay have, is there anything that i have heard about uh, this thing before how do i know this 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 thing is called a desk a table because i have experienced this 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 word this uh, this word desk is feeded in my dictionary with the name of desk if i if someone tells me the name of this thing in russian language i may not interpret the word i may not understand what it means because it's not related to my field of experience it's not related to my frame of reference i cannot find the reference of russian word in my dictionary because it doesn't exist there so what i'm trying to say here is that people perceive things according to their field of experience according to their frame of references according to like what each person has his or her capacity right whenever you see a message uh, let's take the example of a tv drama or let's take the example of an advertisements not not all advertisements are equally effective for all people maybe i like watching advertisements related to food more maybe anyone else any one of you is more interested in watching advertisements related to clothing items or there is a person who is more interested in watching advertisements related to cosmetics uh, and that kind of thing so what i am saying is that the way we perceive things it depends on our choices our interests our needs and so many other things the way we perceive things may be different the way mishkar perceives something the way uh, she looks at something may be different from the way maryam perceives it so this is how so even the perception of the event depends upon m the person who is receiving the message if m is a machine again machines have their capacities sometimes their shortcomings as well if there is a transmitter it may have this uh, uh, it may have certain limit for carrying signals so uh, those kind of things what we are saying here is that the perception of this event depends upon the capacity of n because now this is the person who will be the carrier of the information and this perception no is known as e1 you see this circle is smaller than this circle because of course e1 this if this is if m is reporting the event he will report it according to his perception he may uh, eliminate some parts of the event event he may omit some details event itself is there if m is reporting the event he will report it according to his perception and he may tend to omit uh, uh, certain parts that is why e1 is known as the perception i'll stop here to ask you if you have any questions